the only thing that you have to worry about when you have unprotected sex. Miss Marvin, that knows my story and my journey of how I lost my 15-year-old son to cancer, osteosarcoma, September the 3rd, 2008. But when I lost my son, I was on tour in Jamaica coming back, and I was thinking about something that took place in my life at Simeon High School when I was 15 years old. I had gotten my 14-year-old girlfriend pregnant at the time. When I was coming back on the plane, I had never dealt with this situation. See, people think that abortion only affects the females. But this was something psychological that I had suppressed in my mind, and it came back to my mind on the plane coming back to Chicago from Jamaica after I lost my son, and I thought about it. What if I would have had that child now that I've lost one? So the name of this piece is called Mission Abort. I remember a time that I wish that I could forget. Yet it's etched in my brain like stone. Sometimes I sit it alone thinking I wonder. How many abortions have the women I slept with in my past had because of me? See, y'all, I just feel like tonight is the night for, for me to tell my story because for years I kept it hidden deep down inside of me. It's time for me to let it go now. I want to be free. I can't say that I know or recall every one, but I remember the first. See, y'all, I was 15 years past birth, and I was in love with Pumpkin. A 14-year-old freshman from Simeon High School thought that I knew it all, thought that I was cool, but the Bible says, professing themselves wise, they became fools. So I began ditching school and cutting class, all in an attempt to get some aspirations to become a rap star. <laughs> See, I was well known to be cold with them bars, but my heart had me locked up, stuck in a standstill. I couldn't see past this girl. She was like the center of my world, and everything revolved around her. I had never felt like this before. I was even cool with the parents, who for me, kept an open door, but that was all before she was late. And now I ain't talking about for lunch. I'm talking about no visitors this month. And now we both scared, wondering what would her parents think. See, they were the ones who really cared about us and our future. We literally ripped their dreams apart, and this couldn't be mended with no suture, but we got to tell somebody. We didn't know what to do. We were only babies ourselves doing what grown folks do without a clue of the consequence. Until we had to deal with the consequence of sex with no protection. And, and it's too late for me to pull myself out of this one because now she's expected. And I'm expecting her dad to kill me on sight. See, my father always taught me to do what's right. But now that I'm on center stage, somehow I've gotten stage fright. So we talked and she asked, what was I thinking? And without even blinking, I said, Baby, I'm not ready to be a father. And see, for her, this only made things harder. So she told her mom, who forced her to get an abortion. And along with my coercion, I could only imagine the pressure at 14 that she must have been under. Too young to know the procedure. I didn't even care. Only wished that she would have made me be there. Maybe I needed it. See, things don't register the same unless you see it. And then you can believe it. And now she's left with the permanent scar from a decision that we both made. She's the only one who paid. Or at least that was what I thought. See, you can run from a situation, but sooner or later, you're going to get caught. I felt like it was all my fault. And over 20 years later, my child that was aborted at the age of 15 has now come back to haunt me. My firstborn at the age of 15 was taken away from me. He died from cancer. Too young to know the physical pain of an abortion, but now I know the answer. It's clear now. I see the picture. And it takes me back to that same scripture. 
professing themselves wise, they became fools. So to all the teens in the house tonight, listen to Black Ice, stay in school, learn from my mistakes. Don't wait until it's too late. I apologize. I'm sorry. I wish that I could go back, change, and rearrange things. If you only know the choices, that decisions, the consequence that it brings. See, y'all, at the time, I was only 15. And I remember time that I wish that I could forget. Yet it's etched in my brain like stone. Sometimes I sit alone thinking I wonder how many abortions have the women I slept with in my past had because of me. I just felt like tonight here with y'all was the night for me to tell my story. Because for years I kept it hidden deep down inside of me. It's time for me to let it go now. I want to be free. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is six brothers and a sister down here. And they're going to talk to you guys about what they thought about Black Ice's performance and presentation tonight. You can state your name and then tell everybody what you thought. My name is Derek, and I like the performance. Like, it taught me a lot. Like it motiv first thing, it motivated me to like keep stay in school and to keep moving forward and it taught me to think and use my head before I make certain decisions. Yeah, I like my name is Isaiah and I really I thank you for coming to spit that. You opened my eyes. No I'm not gonna be I'm a t I don't even know what to say, but I'm a <laughs> I'm going to pay attention in school and stuff and not take my life for granted. Like, mm -hmm. not watch what I'm doing with females and stuff. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. what I'm Okay. Uh, my name is Gigi. Yeah, bro. I go by Gigi. But uh, this performance taught me a lot, you know what I'm saying? I actually, like, it opened my eyes. It just made me feel like, like, like it was like, dang, like, I'm really, like, losing a lot of stuff right now. Like, I'm losing, you know, girlfriends. I'm losing, you know, um, homies and stuff, you know, it kind of made me open my eyes and stuff, you know what I'm saying, so, you know, I appreciate it and everything, it just told me, you know, I gotta watch out for who I mess with, females and stuff, you know, just wrap it up, not be stupid, but yeah, it just opened my eyes up to a lot of stuff, and just realized that I hurt a lot of people too. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's the main thing. All right, um, my name Nero, you know, um, this, this, um, what you did, it taught me a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say everything y'all told me, but yeah, it was a lot. Like, um, the fact that at the age of 15, you had your first abortion, so you lost your first kid, basically. And then, like, came along through the, the, your life, like, your, yeah, like, your life that you lost your son. And then, like, I, I understand. Well, I don't, I'm not going to say I understand because I'm not in your shoes, but, like, I can low-key feel that because that's, like, me losing my friends. Like, losing somebody that's close to you. Right. Yeah. And then, like, yeah, like that, I know, like, that, that stuff hurt. Like, um, from gun violence, even though it was just, you know, the cause of cancer, like, it, it's still gun violence. Like, we all, like, sometimes I be thinking, like, why can't we all just get along, you know, just stop, like, be for the peace. That's right. But, um, yeah, like, uh, it, it, it opened my um, eyes up and all that. Thank you, bro. All right, my name is Jerome. Yo, um, yo, peace. It, you really spoke the truth. It really motivated me not to like what I know to use a condom. Don't you don't know you can. It really hurts people like ruin your um life or whatever. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, my name is Britt, and what you said, it really opened my eyes to see, like, from a man or a boy point of view, because, honestly, us women, we think, like, y'all boys, y'all really don't care. Well, that's how I think. Boys, they really don't care. They just be like, I want to brush it off, but deep and sad, we really know y'all care. And I, I was in the back crying because, like, I'm not going through what you're going through, but, like, I could I could feel where you're coming from when you started telling us, and I was just in the back crying. Miss Penn was giving me a hug, like, it's okay, don't cry. But yeah, you just, I need your autograph. <coughs> thank you, thank you. How you doing? My name is Emmanuel. Uh, I did like, I like the performance a lot. Um, like he said, things happen, and the way they happen is on purpose. It's God's way. So, the 
the four elements, water, fire, earth, and wind. That's right. That's right. Well, I want to say, man, that I love each and every one of you all. Y'all take down my phone number so that y'all can keep in contact with me. And uh, let this be the beginning of a bond that we have with one another. So if you guys need advice and you can't talk to your parents or you don't feel comfortable talking to your friends or whatever, then y'all can call me. You know, I'm up every morning, 6 o'clock in the morning. So if it's something that you need, text me. Hey, Ice, can I holler at you for a minute? So-and-so, so-and-so. All right? All right.